Well, hello, hello, everyone. It's Shanti Titus here with Profit Mail Financial Services. I hope that you are having an amazing day. And today we're going to talk about creating vendor profiles or setting up vendors inside of QuickBooks. Why do I want to set up vendors inside of QuickBooks? Why is this important? The reason why it's important is because it's going to make your life a lot easier when it comes time to file the 1099 NECs. What is a 1099 NEC? We'll talk about that in another video. But essentially, if you're paying any individual service provider that's not your employee over $600, per year you want to issue them a 1099 nec okay and in order for you to do that you need to have your information organized together and ready and you need to know the person's uh, social security number or ein number or their address as well and how much you pay them quickbooks actually helps you to keep all this information contained and organized for you and it, that's going to help you so you don't miss the deadline as it pertains to getting out those 1099 necs they are very important to have other people so that they can file their taxes on time and you're not assessing penalties another thing is this if you are not able to issue out 1099s and you've actually paid individuals because your accounting is just all over the place and you have no idea sometimes you pay with debit card sometimes you pay with an ACH draft sometimes you pay with a check and you're just doing that and you don't have a vendor account set up for this person and you're not running it through the same way systematically each time it's going to create a nightmare for you and not only that but if you're ever audited and it's found that you have paid an individual service provider that's not your employee over six hundred dollars um you actually can be fined by the irs per vendor six hundred dollars for each one for not filing a 1099 nec that is why this is important along with you keeping up record for forecasting for your expenses that's why it's important okay so we're going to go over here and look on how to do this it's very simple um you know task that you do not want to miss because it's going to help you so much all right so one of the things you're going to do is you're going to go inside of your quickbooks you're going to log in and then let me put myself somewhere <laughs> you're going to go over to the left hand side you're going to click on the word expenses and you're gonna to go to vendors. It's gonna lead you essentially to this page. The next thing you're gonna do is click on the word new vendor, the green button. All right, one of the things you want to make sure that you have before you start this process is a W-9. Um, that is very good standard practice to make your business more professional, legit, and you know, pretty much operating within the standards of having a company. Okay. So ask for a W9 because the W9 will have the majority of the information on here already. So you can set the people up properly. Okay. So we are going to put in a fictitious company. So essentially put in a company name. And sometimes if it's an individual, they may not have a company name. They may just be themselves. But in this case, this person um, is a DBA. So they have a DBA. They do not have an LLC, but it's an individual. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to pretty much, if I have the W-9, I'm going to pretty much find the information on the W-9 and I'm just going to transfer it inside of my QuickBooks under the vendor profile. Okay. So I'm going to type in one, two, three main graphics. Okay. This is a, not an LLC. This is a DBA that this lady set up. Okay. This is fictitious. So we'll just go through there. So her name is Jane and then Doe, right? So you're going to put in her information here and then you're going to put in her email. This is important because, you know, this helps you to be able to send out 1099s fairly quickly and you have the information at your fingertips when the time comes, okay? Um, at gmail.com. And then you're gonna put in her phone number. Okay, and then you're gonna just keep going down. If you wanna put in that mobile number fax website, that's always good to have as well. especially if you have been dealing with a lot of vendors, okay? Then you, this is very critical because when the end of the year comes, you wanna make sure, um, one of the things that I would suggest that you do is around October, November, is to have someone or have yourself, you know, contact all of your vendors, especially if you paid them over $600 to confirm their address because sometimes individuals move or if it's a small business, they may have moved offices, their lease may be up and you wanna make sure that they receive their 1099. So a good practice, um, a standard of practice, is that last quarter of the year, to reach out to your vendors to ensure that the address that you have on file is correct. If they their address has changed, have them to fill out a new W-9, okay? 
and this is going to help you so you're not chasing ghosts at the end of the year because you're going to have so much to do with gathering everything for taxes and everything okay um and you're just going to put in the city you put in the state you put in the zip code i just putting in something here and then you're going to put the united states if you're doing business internationally of course you want to make sure you put in the right country as well any notes, uh, anything that you need to know about the customer or um, follow up on, you can put there. Attachments, the W-9, this is a perfect place for your W-9. And then this is very important, as, as I was saying before, to keep everything organized, is to put in the EIN or the social security number of the individual, which should be on the W-9. It is a good standard practice that before you issue out or send out any money for payments, is to have them to turn in a W-9. It's gonna help your life to be easier, your accounting life at least. Okay, and then you just put in their social security number here. If it's an LLC, it will be your the their EIN number, okay? Then you're gonna put in the rate that they normally charge you, the terms, do you have to pay in 30 days? Do you pay upon receipts? Um, whatever that is and the account number that they issued to you, or, and if you don't, you don't have to fill this out some individuals don't even issue out account numbers. Um, and then this part is very important. So if this was, um, this is going to help you even more. So if this is a graphics designer. I'm going to choose um, advertising for this, advertising and marketing. So every time that their company, um, I'm paying them, and that is going to be the default, default expense category that's going to be showing on here. So I don't even have to worry about categorizing it because that's going to be where it goes. It's going to go to advertising and marketing. So on your profit and loss statement, that's what's going to show up for advertising and marketing. So her, whenever she has an invoice and you pay it, it's going to hit that expense account. And this is for one, two, three main graphic. Okay. And then after you have all that information in there, you're going to hit the save button. And that's it. Now, Jane Doe, has been saved as a vendor for you. You want to make sure that if you plan on paying vendors over $600 to make sure that you set them up in your accounting system um, with their own vendor profile, make sure you have their EIN or their social and make sure you have all that information because it's going to help you out tremendously. Okay. So if you found this video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. Please share with a fellow entrepreneur who is, um, you know, utilizing books, but may QuickBooks, but may have some issues to so definitely um, share this with them. Also, if you are looking for someone to take over your bookkeeping and accounting, this makes your head hurt. You don't like it. Definitely um, reach out to us. I have a link in the uh, description box below. You literally can fill out the form and someone will reach back out to you to um, assist you in the matter. We do offer consultations because because some people are just starting out in business and they have no idea. I literally had a woman um, recently who asked me what was the difference between what's like revenue and the net profit, right? So, and that made me realize that there is definitely a need for more education. So I'll be sending, I'll be creating more um, videos um, that may seem basic to some people. Um, and I'll be doing some that are more advanced um, it, because everybody's, on different levels in their journey. And I wanna make sure that I really cater to the individuals who are just starting out in business. So um, definitely, 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 if you need help, do not feel ashamed or anything like that. Um, I know a lot of people who go to business school, they take their business degree for granted, they take their business knowledge for granted, and they think that everybody knows it. Um, I definitely wanna make sure that people understand you know, what they're dealing with and what they're doing. Um, and it's not anything to be ashamed of because this, this information was not taught to us in school. Unless you went to a business school or you've had experience in business in a, you know, early on in life, you probably don't know. That's what YouTube is here for. That's what we're here for. All right. Until next time, stay profitable and stay great. And do not hesitate to reach out if you are looking for consultation and edu more education as it pertains to your finances and accounting and bookkeeping for your business. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.